like to call to order the Public Works and Safety Committee meeting on uh, Tuesday, November 17th at 5.30. Please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, roll call. Uh, Alderman Hamill. Here. Alderman Capusta. Here. Alderman Terrence. Here. Director Krager. Here. Statement of public notice. Uh, this meeting was posted in accordance with open meeting laws on November 13th. Status of projects. Sure, we'll go through, we only have two tonight. Uh, Great Water Alliance. So. Um, right now, the plan commission um, gave permission uh, to use a property at the corner of Racine and College. Uh, it's right across from the quarry there for staging for the Great Water Alliance project. They need to submit a plan with a land disturbance permit, um, but that will be where, the, where they're going to do some staging work as they start moving the project through the city of Muskego. S.J. Lewis, that's a contractor, has reached out to the city of Muskego, and they're working on the correct ways of pulling the right-of-way permits, which they'll need to do the work in the city of Muskego currently. They think their work might start in December or January. It keeps getting pushed back a little bit. Uh, but please remember, this will be a one-year project that will go through the city of Muskego, and it will be very difficult traveling north and south along the east side of the city of Muskego. Um, the best thing to do for the latest, greatest, you can pull the plans off, information, contact information, it's called the Great Water Alliance. I have provided a link on our current project page, but please also reach out to them if you need more details. But I am letting you know it is going to be a traffic challenge driving along the east side of the city for the next year. Next project, Hill and Dale reconstruction. So uh, remember on August 21st, 2020, I posted the 90% plans for the Hill and Dale on our website. Since that time, uh, myself and the consultant, we've gotten a couple comments, but nothing too um, more information or uh, nothing too bad. Right now, this last week, I finally reviewed the 100% plans, and now I'm beginning to look through the specifications internally. What that means is all the last little things, we're doing all the little detail stuff, making sure all the notes are on there, making sure all the bid items are there, making sure the specifications, the timing, every little thing that we need to do to make sure we post it. The next plan is to put out the RFP for this work in late November or early December. We will open the bids in December of 2020, and hopefully the plan is to award the contract in January of 2021. We begin the construction in March or April of 2021, and then we wrap up in the fall of 2021 for that project. So we're getting close, so. Thank you. Um, Scott, did you get any more input from uh, the Hill and Dale Association? I got a couple from just a couple of individuals, nothing from them directly. Okay. Um, I know the mayor has kind of met with a couple of people and then he's given me feedback once in a while, but nothing as an association alone. But there's there's a couple people that every month call me and ask for an update or um, they, they give me like, oh, I saw the latest plans. Oh, what about this? And, and usually a lot of it now has been a lot of adding notes and just going through the details. So whoever has, I mean, They've been up since August, the 90% plans. Um, we've had two public information meetings. It, the project even got delayed a year. I'm hoping if you have wanted to talk to me about this project, you have come in and we have given you any time to do that. So. Thanks, Scott. Thanks. Any other questions? Okay, new business. Okay. so. Again, um, one of the best things in maybe um, as we get to what we're looking at here in my memo, um, Wendy, could you put up the map? It's, it's always better to talk to map and I can talk to the thing. So the request was by the Almar um, Estate Subdivision Association. They, they put a request out to look at no parking and, and it was specifically along 
um, and, and I attached her letter, these three locations here, okay? And what they're looking for or when is they're looking for, you know, Fridays and Saturday evenings from April 1st to October 31st. And again, when we talk about no parking signs, I get real leery here because once you do no parking sign, that means no one on these roads can use these signs. And the other thing to remember is we had this one um, le kind of le lessons learned where um, Alderman Madden brought one up uh, about last meeting and then it was pulled because once you do a survey and you start really looking at all the people on these roads, some of them said, yeah, you know what? It, it started good in theory, but now I really don't want this. So as you look and as you have your discussion, my, my big thing, and I'm going to put this out there is, you know, and even talking with the chief is getting a survey of all the people on this road might be a really good idea before we decide one way or another. And I'm just throwing it out there for the committee to really see who wants these and who doesn't, because this will affect holiday parties, it'll affect graduation. And I have found every pe person in individual homes, there are different stages in life. Some have activities where they're going to need some parking, and some people have activities where they don't need some parking. Um, but, you know, this is one where, you know, again, um, I believe the, the association person is here as well as the, the person who, where we know what the business is. It's, it's the Bass, you know, uh, Bass Bay Brew House. That's, that's kind of what's causing um, this issue. And my, my only thing that I can stress is making sure, you know, that everyone gets a fair chance who lives on these roads to speak their mind. Um, Cause I would feel terrible to make a decision and then three people come back and say, by the way, I'd never wanted this no parking sign. Um, and that's what we found out when we did this last one at Boxhorn and then we started going through that list and next thing you know, it was on and then it was pulled before even we discussed it. But um, I think, what the best thing now is there, there's two people here that would like to speak. Um, and I think a good thing is for you guys to start listening and then listen to everything and then kind of make it a, a, a decision about this. It's, it's, it's important to find out when you may put up signs for no parking. And then once they do, it will go to common council because then it allow, we have to get approval from council so that the officers can write tickets for these things. So. All right. Um, I'll, I'll ask first the association um, person. Is it Nate? Yeah. Okay. When you check on the thing, make sure it's on. Yeah. If you pull it, pull it forward. Pull it. Yep. Nope. Try it again. Okay. All right. So um, thank you for taking the time to listen to our request. State your name and address. Sure. Yep, I'm thanks. Nate Radke. I live at West 156 South 7912 Ladwig Drive. I'm the president of the Audemar Subdivision Association this year. Um, again, thank you for taking the time to hear a request. And for clarity on the request, I, I know all the details are in there. We aren't looking to put no parking on the entire street. We're looking for single side of the street parking. Um, there were a handful of times, maybe eight times at max this year where there was some overflow where it basically turned Ladwig Drive, Audrey Court, and Audemar Drive into single lane traffic um, for several hours. A lot of the residents in our yearly meeting expressed concerns about this, some maybe a bit nitpicky, some not so much. Um, and really we don't want to take anything away from what the Bass Bay is doing. They're doing wonderful work and they're great for our neighborhood. But just to make sure that that utilization is safe for our members and the customers of the brew house as well. And that's really all we have other than what's been said so far. Thank you. Thanks. I, I believe it's the owner of Bass Bay, just, which is good that he showed up here as well. So. Hello, uh, it's Ryan Oshman, uh, South 79, West 15851, Audemar Drive. You're going to have to oh, oh, sorry. aim it up towards you. Sure. There you go. Thanks. Better? Yep. Um, 
So the address was South 79 West 15851 Audemar Drive. Uh, again, I'm one of the partners in Bass Bay Brew House. Um, so I'm going to start by saying we do understand our neighbors' concerns um, and understand that the you know that the street does get busy on the weekends, um, but it is really just that it's Friday and Saturday night, a couple of hours through you know they're asking April through the end of October um, just to take a second to touch on the seasonality of our business. Um, the bulk of the business that we do every year happens in June, July, August, uh, the majority of that being Friday and Saturday nights. Throughout the year, um, you know, we're primarily a destination place on the weekends. Uh, it's what we it's what we base our business off of. Uh, parking on the street is not something that's been new to Bass Bay's success. This has been something that has been pretty normal for our neighborhood uh, for years and years and years with Audemars Supper Club. Again, primary business being on the weekends um, and, you know, weddings obviously taking up a lot of our parking there as well. Um, having the ability to overflow onto the street in the way that our customers are able to is important for our business. Um, Again, with the seasonality, we make the majority of our money in the summer, hold on to it for the winter, try to do everything we can to, you know, make the blows of what happens to a seasonal business as minimal as they can be. And, um, you know, for us, it's, it's a pretty big swing. So to be able to, you know, to lose essentially half of the parking spots that are kind of up for grabs for our neighborhood, it's a public street, um, which everybody has the ability to park on both sides of the street, you know, is definitely something that raises a big concern. We wouldn't be here talking about it if it was, you know, a simple matter to us, but it is definitely something that we view to be um, very important. Uh, we really view, you know, we look at the safety concerns and things that we could be talking about here, uh, you know, as long as people are abiding by proper driving regulations, proper parking regulations, that safety really shouldn't be any more of a concern. Having parking on both sides of the street as opposed to one, everybody's still going to have to pay attention to what their kids are doing, that they're not, you know, needlessly playing in the street, running the risk of getting hit by cars. Um, you know, when we're talking about uh, emergency vehicles being able to get in and out of our subdivision. We obviously want a fire truck to be able to get in if we ever have an issue down by our property. Also, um, you know, we'd like to suggest the possibility of, you know, putting proper signage in so people understand that they're not supposed to park within 30 feet of an intersection or a stop sign or a yield sign or five feet from a driveway. Um, we feel like if all these things are, are being followed the way that they're supposed to be, that there would be no issue. Uh, we realize that with having cars parked on both sides of the street, we are limiting it to one car being able to drive down the street at a time, but we feel like that's a, a concern more of a convenience thing than actually a, you know, a safety issue uh, of anyone in the neighborhood. Us as well. We're at the end of the subdivision. We want people to be able to get in in case there's an emergency. Never once uh, have I dealt with a scenario where an ambulance or a fire truck hasn't been able to actually make their way down the street uh, ever in the 30 years that I've been a part of Audemar. It's never been a never been a concern. Um, we're just really hoping that there's something else that we can come up with here with a um, you know a response for how to be able to make this work well for everybody. Um, hoping that essentially you know marking off and no parking around the the intersection of Ladwig and Audemar kind of giving some breathing room there for cars to be able to safely turn down the street um, would hopefully be enough. <clears throat> um, yeah, uh, overall we feel like, and especially going down marking one side of the street for Audemar, Audrey Court, Ladwig Drive, and Audemar Drive, I mean, uh, when we have a Saturday night and we have uh, a wedding of 200 people that are going to take up a good amount of parking, we still have reservations that are coming into the restaurant. 
those people are coming either way. So like what we're talking about, does everybody understand what this really means? Like the people on Ladwig Drive, I feel like now aren't dealing with this at all. I feel like if we were to go down one side street parking, um, down what we're talking about, we'd have cars parking, you know, practically two woods, if not two woods, um, you know, potentially raising more safety concerns by having now people try to figure out how to park on one side of the street. So they're pulling into the parking lot, driving through the parking lot, leaving the neighborhood, not able to find parking on one side of the street, turning around in neighbors' driveways to come back through to try to find another parking spot just feel like it ends up creating more chaos than what we have now. Uh, yeah, so again, long story short, I'm just hoping that we can come up with something else here besides flagging the whole street. I don't really think that everybody involved understands what that would really mean and the additional chaos that that would cause. Thank you. That's all I have, thank you. Anybody else? I, District 7 Alderman Eileen Madden, I did what I'm supposed to do when I saw this come across the, my desk and I went out and I knocked on some doors. My biggest concern is a lot of the people I spoke to didn't even know it was on the agenda. So I, I do believe that there are a lot of people that were left out in this conversation when they decided to do these things. One of the things I heard was people not complaining so much about the vehicles parking to go to Odmar as much as neighbors parking on the street. <laughs> so I know that the people I talk to are not in favor of it. They said they're, they're entertaining their friends and family on the weekends. And if they can't park there, I think it's much more than people realize is going on already. So I would ask that you let this sit at least until we find out how many people in that area are really interested. And if there's anything else, as Mr. Oshman said, that might be done to rectify this a little bit. Thank you. <clears throat> Anybody else that would like to speak? Okay. Um, any comments, suggestions? Uh, I don't know. I, the last couple of times we've had stuff come up like this, I've sort of been on that side of shying away from trying to put no parking signs everywhere. I would like some on my road, but I realize it's not practical at times. Um, it is a little bit different. I um, love the business, love what you're doing. I, you guys are doing a great job. I also um, understand that you know, as you grow, if you hit a space, do you look at adding more parking? Obviously, that's a business decision you guys have to figure out. Um, that balance between the road not necessarily being designed for a business and being more for the residents, but you guys are also a part of the community as well. Um, I kind of would lean towards what Eileen said of wanting to hear from more people. I feel like the we had a little bit of an issue over um, a lake decision where we didn't necessarily hear from everybody and we had more people come back and it changed the direction. So um, the last time we had somebody approach you and I about no parking signs, I told them, hey, I want to hear from... 80 to 90 percent of the people that are in that road even if you get signatures you get names uh, you get the majority of the people that come in here and say hey we're willing to give up our own ability to park in front of our own yard then that's something that we could then consider um, and I would kind of ask that same thing uh, of the association that we not just have a rep but we really get to hear from everybody that would be sort of my thought that we sort of punt on it and wait and ask for more feedback if that's what they really want yeah, I, I kind of feel the same way. I'm, I'm not, I usually don't like no parking signs unless there's an overwhelming outcry for them because it really does affect the people who live right on the street. Um, you know, they have parties, they have friends come over, holidays, and all of a sudden they're not going to be able to park there. Or, you know, um, it, it limits, you know, when you do one side of the street, people just park farther away. Uh, on the streets. So, you know, unless there's an overwhelming outcry, you know, I'm, I'm usually not in favor. So I, th I th agree. I think we probably need to get a survey of everybody that it would be affecting. That, that would be the, I think, the best approach to take in this case. 
think that's good info. Who's going to do the surveying? Yeah. Whoever's asking for it would be my recommendation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so if that's, I mean, that's my thought. I, mean, I would agree. So who would be doing the survey? Yeah. Okay. If you're wanting us to make the change, then do the legwork. And if my thought would be, if nobody shows up to the meeting, then we it gets voted down, and that would be my decision on that process. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's a good point because I think one thing that Nate said was maybe eight times for, um, over the last year for several hours. So to me, that's not an overwhelming problem when it's been, they've been in business for many, many years. So we... I make a motion that we table it until next meeting and request that they come back with more info. And more feedback. Second. All those in favor, single by saying aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Um, All right, next one. Very similar to the first one. Um, Wendy, if you could put up the map. Again, very similar. It's, it's Park Drive. Um, Another request was for the no parking signs along Park Drive again. Um, I believe this was kind of started by the Bay Breeze condominium, if I, if I understand right. And, and we're kind of looking, and I stress kind of the very similar things. It, you have a lot of people on this road. And similar to what I said before of how affected the box horn and once you start doing the survey, it's good for you guys to hear about this, but it's also too to be very cautious and make sure we do our, our pretty good thorough research of why this request is and make sure we have everyone. Because besides the condominiums, I see a lot of single family homes there and I don't want them to not be heard, I guess here. Um, so it, my memo is almost exactly the same as the one I just wrote. Um, but and my concerns are kind of the same ones that you just heard from me. So um, I believe there's a gentleman here from Bay Breeze and, and please come and kind of give us your you know, thought process and, and, and stuff. Uh, my name is Jack Belke, S75W17651, Harbor Surf. Um, I'm When, when uh, we had the, the meeting with the elementary school project, and the aldermen all agreed at that particular time that there was no parking permission to go up there because of, of that particular uh, situation. Not so much that we requested at the time because we felt that with, with the limited amount of parking on the other side, that people would start parking on that side. And they're not parking on the street. Which I understand is, is, you know, the no parking side really is they're parking on our property because that road is so narrow that they don't park on the road. They literally park on our grass. So it's a liability issue for us. So it's really, you know, one, the aldermen basically already agreed to do it by a separate meeting. And then, you know, the fact that the road is not being used for parking because it's really only two parts of why. I, I believe, and I just want to make sure, I believe if I remember the actual meeting and the talk was, once the entire development was finished, we would come back and revisit this situation about the no parking both on Mishi and Park Drive. Now, just to let you know, temporary occupancy has been given to the first two sets of buildings, but they have not been given to the, the original school yet. So technically, I don't, I'm not trying to be, you know, dividing line. It's not fully operational yet, which means is once it becomes fully operational, you're going to start seeing all the contractors go away. Now, if you drive down recently, Mishi Drive is a lot less because now people are parking in there. And the point of that meeting was we would come back and revisit this once everything's operating for that. 
And so that was, I just want to make that clear. If anyone was here, I, I believe I got that one right, and we can check back the notes, but that was a point. This thing was, the request was, you're looking at just doing park drive. The forum was before Mishi. In, park drive in, front of the, in front of the condo. Uh, yeah. Right. Okay. Just that one section. It is severely That's correct. And just to be clear, you're saying just Harbor Circle to Janesville Road? No, no. the other way around. Right. Okay. Harbor Circle and North. Yep. Mm -hmm. I think it's from here to here. Right. So you're talking about that next house, correct? The lot line right. of that next house? Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. I, I still stress to, I understand, you still share that road with the, the residents on the other side. I just want to make clear and that that's a public road, so everyone can can use where that that is for parking right now. So just I understand that Scott, but at the same time it's private property, and I can tell you everybody in that association would love to see that that east entrance there. They tore our private signs out of there. It's all marked private property. They literally tore them out of there twice this summer. They're parking along that whole area on the west side of that road on the private property. 
So it's not like it's being shared for that. That is our property in the end of the association. Do we know where that easement goes, how far off the road it goes? I, I would have to look into like what the right of way is. Um, that's the biggest thing. Let me, yeah. I, I would have to look at the right of way and see what it is. And if we could look at the previous notes in the meeting. You would, necessarily th you would think so, but you would, <clears throat> it's not necessarily because now you're talking your lakes and things vary uh, from the history. So I would have to really pull up uh, all the documents on there and see what the right of way is. So. Oh, I, I can uh, easily probably tomorrow I'll find out what the right of way is and, and, and they can direct me to do it and I'll probably do it anyways just to find out what it is because now I'm curious, to tell you the truth, and, and want to see what it is. Yep. Yeah, but you, you, would, you would still need a permit for... If you pull, like, for example, let's say you put up a per, uh, okay, if you pull up, a, if you put up a fence or you do a berm, berm is like land disturbance permit, both things you come in with a plan. From that plan, you provide your, your plat of survey or your property. We look at your property, we'll, we'll compare it to the right away. We'll make sure you're a certain amount away based off of our code, and then you would follow all the right rules of what needs to, do, to be done. But by pulling that permit, it allows not only engineering but planning. We all look at what it, that is. So. I just, I just want to finish by saying I'm disappointed that coming here last fall before this whole thing went in, and feeling like I got reassurance that we would be taken care of in this situation, and come back down and kind of get the end of So you. Would you need us to make a motion to defer then until you come back with the... You, yes, oh. if, 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 if you would like me to do, do that, say defer to the next meeting, Scott, get research, find out what the right of way is, where it is, show what it is. I can I can get a map, a GIS, and, and show what it is and say, this is the baby's um, uh, property, this is ours. And then I can kind of detail map even what your request of where the signs are to kind of give you a better idea of, of what that is. I would not be in support of that. I'd like to make a motion to approve the no parking zone signs from Harbor Circle north to the end of the property for Harbor Circle for Bay Breeze and honor, the, and honor what was promised I mean, back at that Muskego Elementary School meeting. I was there. That's what we were told. That's what we were promised that, that part of that project. So I would make a motion to put the signs in on the west side of the road. And we do have we do have full contingency of people that have said they would love to see that there. Is there a second? Mm -hmm. I am. I mean, in my opinion, well, we didn't I, get a second on it. <laughs> so, I'm just going back to what was said at the Muskego Elementary meeting. So I don't think that's in protection. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. Are you gonna nope. say something? Oh, well, I, um, for me, the the survey. I don't know if that's necessarily going to be much of a decision maker in the whole parking, no parking, right? I mean, we're just determining how far somebody could park before it's their property. Um, I would be one that I would say put up a fence, put up a berm, whatever you guys need to do to protect your property. I don't think a no parking sign is going to protect you from teenagers. They're going to park somewhere else and run across. Um, if the issue really is that trespassing, that um, sort of the vandalism of the property, I think you do your best to protect your interests. Um, I don't think a no parking sign is going to give you that protection. Um, you know, in if you put up a fence then they may park a little further off, but at least now they're not cutting through. Now they have to actually trespass and come onto your side. I have some friends at Low over there. I kind of am familiar with that spot. So from my perspective, I don't I don't think the no parking signs are going to accomplish what you're looking for, so I wouldn't really be in favor of putting them in at this point. That's where I'm at on it. Putting, putting a no parking sign in there. 
Well, I would like to defer this until we find out what the easement is. And also I'd like to see those meetings from the, 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 the notes from the meeting that is mentioned. Okay. Okay. Yep. So I'd like to make a motion to uh, defer it until the next meeting. I'll second. All those in favor, signal by saying aye. 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 All those against? No. Motion passes um, two to one. Um, new business placed on file. Doesn't look like there is any. Um, communication miscellaneous business as authorized by law. Once again, it doesn't look like there is any and motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned.